Alrighty, folks, let's pop over here. Let me let you see me. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Ballad. I am going to be your host today for challenge number three of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, and I'm super pumped about it. Um, I see so many familiar faces in the chat. I see Sean and Susan Viola, General Kenobi. Hello there. Good to see you, my friend. Um, Jana, Frank, Kathleen, or <laughs> Catherine, sorry, I remixed your name there for a second, my bad. Jack Watson, it's good to see you. Uh, Clarissa, let's see, Sam Peterson, the one and only. Uh, Irfan, Greg, welcome in everybody. Z, it's good to see you. Um, Alex Lazarus in the chat with the yeet yeet. Um, I know we are on challenge number three, not number two. I apologize. I was not able to stream yesterday. I was feeling very unwell. Um, but for those of you who were looking for challenge number two or who would like to go back and do challenge number two, I'm going to be recording that challenge and it's going to be uploaded um, as a replay and I will let you know when that is prepared. So there will be a challenge number two. Um, I'm not going to leave you hanging on that. I apologize for um, the missing challenge, but um, it will be available very soon. So I am going to pull up our uh, challenge page real quick because I am going to go over all of the ways that you folks can get involved with me and jump into doing these challenge alongside me. Um, so let me pull up my page right here and let's pop over and take a look. So if you would like to join the Daily Creative Challenge for Photoshop with me, you can head over to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. That is the landing page for the challenge. You will know that you're in the right place because you will see the January 3rd to January 28th up here at the top. And if you go there and you don't see this, perhaps you're watching in the future um, and you are looking at previous challenges. Uh, and when you go to this page, it says a different date. All you have to do is scroll down to the very bottom and you will see all of our challenges is archived by date and you can find the proper one. Um, every day we have challenges unlocked um, as they uh, as they come out. So we did a social bio challenge, our first challenge. Um, we will be re-recording and posting for you the ascending type challenge for challenge number two and today we're going to be creating a fantasy landscape. Um, and what we are aiming to do with all of these challenges is to kind of mimic or create in our own style, in our own fashion, a creative popular trend. And we're doing a post a day instead of poster a day. So these are like little posts that are um, designed really dynamically um, that you could put on your Twitter or your Instagram or whatever it is that you use. So I'm very excited to jump into this. Um, you can also join our Discord if you scroll down to the bottom here um, and click join us so that you can get some feedback. I was absent yesterday and the end of the first challenge day. So today I'm going to be playing some catch up and jumping in there, checking out what you folks have made. Um, I will be posting the work that I have done so far and I can't wait to see what all of you folks have created. So um, Basmala, welcome in. It's good to see you. Marie, Laura, Susan, good to see everybody. Um, Vlad, Vladka, welcome in. Ashraful, it's good to see you. Um, and Umicorn, Christelle, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's jump in to what we've got planned for today. So if you hit this get started button, you will be able to download the starter file that I have created for you. And that starter file looks a little something like this. Challenge number three, fun in the sun. Make a dreamy fantasy landscape using sky replacement and landscape remix. So again, like we did in the first challenge, I am, before we jump into the kind of the meat of the work that we're going to be doing today, I would like to go over the assets that I'm using during today's stream so that you folks can either use the exact same assets that I am using or you can search around and find your own. So I've got these really great uh, fonts here that are Adobe fonts and when you open this starter file if you click in here they should download for you because they are Adobe fonts but just in case that doesn't work for whatever reason. Um, this is the Hagante font, this big bubbly fun font. It's kind of kind of going for like a like a 70s, 80s vibe with this big chunky font. Um, and then the challenge number three font is done in Corner Store JF. So if I pop over here, I've got this pulled up so that you folks can see it. 
Um, Corner Store JF looks a little something like this. Any folks can just jump over to fonts.adobe.com and find that for yourself, activate the fonts and you will have it. And the same goes for um, Higante. If you jump in here, just search it in your little search bar here and you will find it. You will also find the way that you can activate the font and a little bit about the font designers, which is really cool. Um, and then I urge you to kind of explore the free section of Adobe Fonts. I've been trying to draw a lot of attention to this because it's an excellent resource. Uh, so I just typed in landscape in the free section of Adobe Fonts um, and I scrolled through here to find some that I really like and I love this one right here. The uh, It's just a little panorama of the Carpathian Mountains which I thought was really fun. Um, so I just snagged that image. I went ahead and licensed that and brought it into my file. So those are the fonts and the images that I am using and we're going to jump in to our Photoshop and kind of turn this into a fun, funky, um, summery, springish kind of post that I think is going to be really cute. So um, it's good to see you Basmala. Thank you for popping in today and you Odari. Welcome in. It's always great to have you. So uh, in this challenge file that I have for you, there's a little folder that just says challenge number three. Now I've jumped in um, my Adobe stock image and I did a little test beforehand just to be sure that we could get to the end of this because we're going to be using neural filters today, which depending on the system that you're using can be a little bit intensive. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we had one. So if I have to, I can Martha Stewart you folks. Um, but in this little folder, you'll see it says challenge number three. You have the description of the challenge and the font in here doing the fun in the sun kind of uh, title. Um, and you can use this because that's how I'm going to have my stuff placed. You can actually use this if you want to just type in something different um, or you can hide it completely and use something um, of your own making. But I'm going to go ahead and hide just our little spiel here um, and I may come back and edit the placement of this font and change the challenge three. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hide that and I'm going to pull up our Adobe stock image. Now, the first thing that I would like to do is I love this landscape, but we are doing square ratio uh, posts for these challenges. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on my Adobe stock photo and I'm going to hit control T to transform or command T if you are using a Mac. I'm a PC gal, so you're going to see, you're going to hear a lot of control this and control that. Um, but if you're using a Mac, it would be command for you. And I'm going to hold alt and I'm gonna resize. And the reason why I hold Alt is because that will actually scale this from the center, which is very useful. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Um, and I'm gonna zoom out. I can zoom out very easily holding Control or Command if you are using a Mac and pressing the plus and minus keys. Um, so that's a little tip for you folks. If you don't want to press Z and grab the, um, the zoom tool and zoom in and out and hope that you stop it right at the right point, um, the plus and minus keys with the combination of Control or Command is really great. And I'm gonna hold Shift so that I can continue to transform this on the same um, level throughout my movement here and just slide this over. Now, what I kind of want to do is create like a, a little chunk of this being sky and a little chunk of this being grass. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger and I'm gonna move this over like so because I want um, the sky to be like on almost like little like triangles, not quite triangles, but um, you know, the top right being a little bit of sky and the, the bottom left being a little bit of the grass. Um, and you don't have to do it this way. That's just kind of what I like. I might even bump this over because I don't know if I want all of this showing here, um, but we can do it maybe like that. That seems a little kind of nice. This is even kind of cool too, actually, with just this right here, but let's do it like this first and then maybe we'll do a, f a few little iterations if we have time. So I'm going to go ahead and just select it like that. And then the next thing we're going to do is sky replacement. And sky replacement is really fabulous because not only can we replace the sky very, very accurately, but we have multiple skies to choose from. And once we're done doing the sky replacement, that feature actually creates a folder 
full of masks and images for you so that you could even go in and edit them and you can also toggle it on and off. So when you do the sky replacement, you are not ruining the original file that you're working with. You're just adding something over the top of it that fits perfectly into place like a puzzle um, of that sky. So we're gonna come up here to edit and we're gonna come down here to sky replacement. And it opens up this nice little panel for us here. So I really like using these clouds, um, but the first thing you may see, especially if you have never used sky replacement, is you will probably see this sunset kind of gradient here. Um, and like I said, these, these clouds are my favorite clouds that I really love to use. I have to be careful because every time I use sky replacement, I typically want to use this cloud image and if I do that all the time, then it looks like all of my images are from the exact same moment in time with the exact same clouds. So watch out for that if you decide that you're going to use sky replacement a lot, kind of mix it up. Um, but you can scroll down through here and you can select all different kinds of clouds and things. So we can kind of test some of these. You can come in and add um, these clouds, you have some specular clouds you can add. So if you want to um, add clouds with a different mood even, you can do that. Um, we can try these ones. These ones are pretty dramatic and interesting. We've got some sunsets here. So if we want to try sunsets, uh, we can basically do whatever we want. This is literal magic, in my opinion, and we can try out whatever we would like to try out here. But I'm gonna go to the clouds that I really love um, and let you kind of choose whatever you feel is right for your project. I'm going to go ahead and use these because I think it has that just really nice um, fluffiness to it that's kind of fantasy-like and a bit dreamy. And you can also come in here and kind of edit these um, these settings here that will change the look and feel of it because depending on the image you're using, uh, these clouds might not fit in here so perfectly. So um, you can kind of edit the shift edge and you'll notice what this does um, is it kind of brings that sky down to the very edge of our mountains here if we want, um, but we can also kind of push it um, back just a little bit and you can see how that edge kind of fades. Um, and I kind of want it like this just so that it's not really encroaching upon our mountains, but it, it looks as natural as it can look with us having put in a completely different sky that does not actually belong here. Um, General Kenobi in the chat with the classic songs. Um, I've got sunshine too um, at my fingertips here in Photoshop. <laughs> um, pro tip, add your own skies into replacement. This is true, Sean. You can also upload your own images to sky replacement. So if you found some, some sky images maybe on Adobe Stock or someplace else and you would like to add them into your project, you can. Or you can take pictures of skies um, just around in your own environment if you prefer and you can use those skies in sky replacement. Um, we can fade the edge of this if we want so it's got that nice little fade there at the bottom but if we want it like really just you know it kind of looks like you can kind of see this edge where it was cut and placed in here. I don't really like that per se. Um, I do want to have a little bit of a of a fade in here. And I think somewhere around the midpoint is good. We can change the brightness if we want, which actually doesn't look bad for these fluffy clouds. Um, if we wanted to do that, it maybe doesn't perfectly match our lighting here in the scene. But if you would like to do that, you can because we are doing kind of dreamy fantasy-esque images today and that is fine. Um, you can also change the temperature. So if you want it a lot more blue, you can do that. Um, if you want it a little more um, kind of warm tones, you can. And I think I'm actually going to leave mine set on the warmer end of the spectrum because I think it matches better with our mountains. Um, and you can also scale if you like. And I would say be careful with the scaling because you are using an image here. It's not an infinite tileable sky. So I can crank this up if I want to. That actually doesn't look half bad. It makes it look like it's very um, foggy. So you can really kind of alter this however you want. But if you dip below 100% in the scaling, you'll start to see the edges of the image. Um, so make sure you pay attention to that. Um, and if you are getting kind of the edge of the image in there, I'm gonna go ahead and just manually type 100% here. Um, if you're getting into the 
uh, edge of the image, um, just make sure to edit it a little bit so you don't see that because you don't want to ruin the effect. Um, so I've pressed enter and if I can scrub this up just a little bit so you can see a little bit more of my layers panel, um, you can see that I have this nice little folder here um, and I can toggle it on and off if I like and it does not edit directly to um, my Adobe stock image. So I always have my original image if I want here. Um, and you can actually toggle these on and off and explore a little bit um, of what we have done. So you can see that we've got foreground color added in there and foreground lighting and then the sky is kind of masked to the edge here that it has detected of our mountains. And then you remember that I changed the brightness and the temperature which is it is <clears throat> excuse me, it has added that as um, little adjustment layers, which is really nice to give me the effect that I edited within that little um, that little dialog box. So I really love this feature. It's one of my favorite, um, and I think it works super well for this particular kind of project. So we have got our um, stock image in here. We've got our sky replacement group and what I'm going to do quickly is I am going to hold shift and I'm going to select these here. I'm going to right click and I am going to convert to smart object. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because we are going to um, apply some neural filters to this now and I would like for it to all be one separate image but the beautiful thing about using smart objects now is that if I decide that I would like to revert to my original image, I can always double click the um, image here and I will be able to, let's see if I can do it here. It looks like my Photoshop is thinking, um, which is not great. Um, so maybe I will, yeah, here we go. All right, I'm gonna save. Um, and then yes, yeah, so I've, I've saved it. So now I've double clicked that and it's brought me into the original file. And you can see that in this smart object, I have my sky replacement here because I've merged them all together and it actually shows me the entirety of that Adobe stock image. So I've got just this on my canvas here, but after double clicking the uh, image icon here, it's opened my, my group um, and you can see where I've edited it, where I've put in that sky, um, and you can also see the full scope of the image. So I've got literally everything in here that I grouped together. Um, and if I wanted to, I could come in and crop, but basically I've got all of my original assets and I don't have to worry about um, any kind of changes being made totally permanently if I'd like to revert. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just say no, cause I don't need to save, cause I've got my file here. And the next thing is we are gonna dive into some neural filters. And I would love to know how many of you folks um, have actually taken a, a dip into the pool, into the realm of neural filters. Um, is anyone in the chat um, kind of a fan? Do you have favorite neural filters that you love to use? I would love to hear about it. Um, I see some folks talking about using cameras. My camera is stuck to my hip, always with me, um, says Sean. Uh, are you folks talking about possibly taking um, sky images of your own um, to... Uh, to use in the sky replacement because that would be great. I would love to see that in the discord if you folks decide to do that. Please let us know if you actually took the image um, yourself. Um, can you change the mask of the sky replacement? Yes, Adrian, because it is an actual mask. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and reopen that. So if I come over here to the um, the sky mask here um, and I select this mask and I grab my brush tool Let me go ahead and grab my brush tool make sure I have caps locks off um, and I decide that I would like to let's crank this up a little bit and I've got white on you can see I can draw um, in here on on the mask um, so yes you can absolutely alter this mask however you want because it is um, a mask layer that is put in there um, so I'm going to go ahead and say no because I don't want to ruin our mask over here in our main file. And with our sky replacement group selected, I can also show you the little test run that I did too. It's pretty darn similar um, to what we've got and I honestly don't know which one I like better. I like the clouds better in the first one, but I might like the, the ground better in the second one. But maybe we'll work on both because um, we've got uh, maybe five minutes left here. 
um, we'll see how much time we have. So I'm gonna come in here to our sky replacement. I'm gonna go to filter and neuro filters. There we go. Um, and when you open the neuro filters, what you may see um, is a lot of ways that you can download um, all of the different kinds of, uh, of neuro filters available. You will need to make sure that you do download them. Um, and it may take a little while depending on what um, system you have, but I've got Landscape Mixer um, downloaded and I just need to toggle it on over here to activate it and I can come over here and I can select from the presets that are available um, if I like. Um, maybe I'll come in and do um, like a kind of bright one if I want. Um, but what I really love to do is to use the sliders and um, I'm going to kind of slide up on our spring here because I want to add a bit of kind of magical hue to this um, and it's gonna think for just a moment but I just wanted to kind of use the landscape mixer to blend these two images together because while I can edit that sky um, as I start to place it when I use the sky replace um, I, I kind of want it to all feel like it's um, all one image and I didn't replace the sky and I also wanted to have the same like green texture so that it almost looks like an older 70s or 80s um, photograph uh, and I think that this does it really well honestly because it kind of I've zoomed in a lot to this image and if I had zoomed out and kept a lot of the quality using the landscape mixer would make a much cleaner kind of vibe here but I've zoomed into that image and we're going for kind of a vintage retro look and so it gives me exactly the texture I'm looking for. I really like this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this like this but I urge you to kind of get in here and scroll and do all of those things. Um, let me actually because oh, we have we, we don't have a lot of time but I can do the autumn one the autumn one is one of the most dramatic changes and I like it and I think it changes the color of everything so drastically it's kind of a wowing moment um, which really <laughs> kind of blows my mind so I might do it or yeah look at that look so it changed our clouds and it made everything here like it added dirt and grass and it added um, like this yellow tone to all the, it's just so cool. It really made this look like it's in autumn, which is not the vibe we're going for. We do want more of a spring kind of look. So we're gonna come back to this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna crank spring up just a little bit. I'm gonna leave it there. And then we are going to edit our text before I have to take off, okay? So definitely check it out because it's 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 very fun. It's very, very fun. Um, I am going to go ahead and press OK. Boom. Um, so that I have my image and then I'm going to toggle on my um, my text again. And I think honestly, I might want this to be a little bit brighter, but I don't want it to be too bright because I kind of like this juxtaposition of like a semi bright background with a very bright text over the top of it. Um, so you can noodle with colors uh, if you want to change some colors up, make things a little bit warmer if you like, however you decide your challenge piece should go. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this down like so. And I'm moving it down because I want some of the bright text to like encroach upon these hills. And it is not, you know, with the with the text being very bright and the background also being bright, you know, it might be hard for some folks to see. So if you want it to be a little more readable, feel free to change it. I kind of like that style where something is just shy of almost being too bright together. Um, and it's not something that I've ever really done before in design. So I really wanted to try it, but I might do a few iterations. Um, and I'm going to bring our challenge three text down by free transforming it and I'm going to we could even have it kind of encroaching upon this F if I want I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna say uh, maybe have some fun in the Sun could be cool um, and I've got just a few minutes here and in that few minutes I am going to show you very quickly Maybe I won't have that touching. I'm going to show you very quickly how I achieved this wavy text um, Kind of effect here 
uh, so that you can wave it differently if you decide you'd like to wave it differently. Um, so I've just clicked here to give myself some lorem ipsum. Um, and what you want to do is, I'm just going to click this off, is you want to see this little icon up here that has a T that's sitting on a little um, bezier curve. Go ahead and click that and it's going to open a little panel that will allow you to warp the text. So I could do, let's see, I believe I used rise for this. Um, and you can change the bend, you can change the horizontal distortion if you want, um, however you think fits your project. You can kind of um, slope it down a little bit more. You could also use, I believe, flag is kind of a cool one. So you can kind of go through here and experiment with all of these things that are available. Use the bend, horizontal, and vertical distortion and kind of find a curvy nature for text um, as you like. Um, but that is going to conclude our fun in the sun kind of design. I can't wait to see what you folks make. This has been a blast. I am going to have to take off for today, but thank you very much for joining me. Keep on a lookout for the recording of challenge number two, and I will see you folks in the discord. Adios, everyone.